We often tend to think of the indie gaming scene as a place where new ideas flourish, and to some extent that's true, but for every Battleshef Brigade we get about 5 Metroidvanias with retro art styles. Not that I have any issue with that, there's no great need for brand new ideas and innovation if the end experience is still well made. But then something like Moonlighter comes along, and I find myself wondering why nothing like it has really made it into my sights before. Moonlighter is a roguelike, not unfamiliar in the indie scene, but with a very unique twist. Instead of simply exploring dungeons and getting further and further each night, you also have a store to run during the day, called Moonlighter. You're charged with running the family store, which means stocking it, adjusting prices, and manning the register during work hours, before hitting the local dungeons at night to score more loot to sell. In terms of story, it's not super strong, but its premise is charming and unique enough that I was hooked almost immediately. The actual plot does get stronger as you proceed through the game, with hints at the dungeons holding a number of mysteries, as well as the presence of a locked fifth dungeon, which no one has ever seen inside before. Not bad in terms of motivations, and it's all doled out in a familiar fashion. There are plenty of notes to be found in each dungeon, as well as lots of local chatter in town to help fill in the blanks. The story of Will, the white-haired young man you play as, is brought to life through a bright and colourful pixel art style, complete with delightfully squishy animations. Combined with its generally soothing soundtrack while you run the store, and the suitably varied themes for each dungeon, Moodlighter is a joy in terms of its visuals and audio. Not only that, but little touches often impact the gameplay as well, from the cute emotes that pop up above customers' heads to tell you how they feel about your store, to the screen shake and hit stop effect that come with bigger attacks, which honestly just makes the combat feel so much more satisfying. It's a good thing that Moonlighter's combat does feel so satisfying, because otherwise, it's a bit too simple. Not so simple that it's bad, but there really isn't much you can do beyond attacking and charge attacking with one of the game's handful of weapon types. That's not to say that the game's combat isn't engaging, however. Most encounters often boil down to intelligent use of your surroundings, as well as smart dodging, assuming you haven't already boosted your attack power to deal with any potential threats. The combat is also helped along by a decent variety of enemies with unique attacks, and there's nothing more interesting and mildly terrifying than getting deep into a dungeon and seeing something strange, new, and probably very deadly staring you down. This is thanks to the game's roguelike elements. Like most roguelikes, the dungeons you experience are procedurally generated, so while you'll often see familiar layouts and familiar enemies, you'll never know exactly what to expect on each trip underground. Also like its roguelike brethren, Death in Moonlighter doesn't come without a cost, but I must say, I've found Moonlighter to be one of the most reasonable roguelikes around, especially when we're talking about death penalties. The deal is that when you die you lose roughly 80% of your required loot and have to either start again in a new version of the dungeon or return to town. You keep whatever items you stored on your person while your pack is emptied, so no matter how you do you're never coming away empty handed. I could have easily seen Moonlighter taking away your entire inventory or even a huge chunk of your money upon death. So this punishment is much less harsh than it really could have been. Speaking of your inventory, how you stack the items you pick up during each dungeon dive is surprisingly important. Most items will allow you to stack a number of the same item in any space you choose, however there are also random cursed items that will have varied effects on your other inventory. Some curses will cause adjacent loot to be destroyed upon returning to town, or require you to store them in specific spots in your pack. There are even curses that remove other curses from items. It's a strangely engrossing take on inventory management, which almost becomes like a mini tile puzzle game. You'll always want to store your most valuable gear at the top, just in case you die, and though you'll want to stack as many similar items as you possibly can, cursed loot can only be stacked when both the loot and the curse are the same. The absolute depth of this system caught me off guard, and while it's not the main focus of the game, like the combat or the store management, it certainly adds a little something to the experience. That said, the real meat of Moonlighter, beyond the dungeon diving, is the act of actually running your store. Initially things start off pretty simple. The loot you pull out of dungeons goes onto your shelves, you set the prices, and you accept payment at the register, and for the most part this doesn't really change. Customers will come in and examine your wares, and judging by their reactions, as denoted by these adorable emotes, you can tell whether you're over or under charging for an item, or on the rare occasion, charging the perfect amount. When shelves are empty you have to restock them, but this is about as complicated as early store management gets. Over time however, things change. You'll have newer, more valuable stock, obviously, but you'll also have store upgrades and new types of customers to deal with along the way. Store upgrades allow for more shelf space, locked cases for valuable items, and even a store assistant who can run the store for a price if you're really feeling the call of the dungeon. You also get smaller items such as cash registers that encourage customers to leave higher tips, and discount boxes for when you really want to get rid of items quickly. Some customers will also help you try to get rid of items quickly in that they'll actually try to rob you. Again, these customers are denoted by the little emotes that appear above their head, and they aren't super difficult to deal with early on, as you just have to tackle them to retrieve the stolen wares and send them on their way. 
However, with more space to cover as you upgrade your store, as well as more customers to serve, finding the time to deal with thieves can quickly become a hassle, even when your assistant is supposed to help deal with them. Of course, you have more to upgrade than just the store itself. The town and indeed our white-haired hero need upgrades too, or you won't be getting very far. You're able to purchase various services such as blacksmiths and apothecaries for the town, which in turn let you upgrade your gear and buy potions. I found the way upgrades would feed back into the gameplay loop of adventuring and shopkeeping to be incredibly satisfying. Each dungeon dive leads to loot you can sell, which leads to money that you can use for upgrades, which leads to getting deeper into each dungeon, which leads to more valuable items that you can sell for more money, in turn paying for more upgrades to let you get further, or other upgrades to help you make more money. And the truly great part is that as you start to tire of the dungeon dive in combat, it's not long at all before you're back at the register selling your wares, and vice versa. Neither chunk of gameplay lasts long enough at any given time for you to get bored. About the longest time you'll spend in any given dungeon is whenever you choose to complete it and move on, which means we've got to talk about boss fights. While not the highlight of the game, each dungeon's boss is a nice way to cap off a challenging run that's taken you through three previous levels of the dungeon before it. They can be difficult, but I never found any of them frustrating, and you're always able to grind up a little bit more money in order to buff yourself if you're having serious trouble. While the game's bosses didn't really frustrate me, there are a couple of minor issues that would rear their heads every so often. I found that there were frame rate issues as well as some rare instances of input lag when the action on screen got particularly hectic, especially in the later dungeons. Also, and this might just be me, but I found it frustrating that constant damage effects such as poison, fire, or shock damage would count multiple times against the shield you'd receive from resting in an upgraded bed. My biggest issue would have to be that the game almost feels too easy. While I still enjoyed the game a lot, I feel like it could use some sort of underlying tension, perhaps requiring you to pay for rent or upkeep of the store. As it stands, money is used solely for upgrades, and there's no way to lose it outside of just spending it. But even this isn't such a huge deal. Like, yeah, it could be a bit more challenging, but it really doesn't need to be, you know? All in all, Moonlighter is a chilled out experience that brings surprisingly engaging ideas to an otherwise solid roguelike experience. With all that said, Moonlighter is excellent. It's essentially two games in one, between the dungeon diving and the shopkeeping, and while the dungeon diving doesn't bring anything really new to the table, Moonlighter delivers a satisfying if simple experience. Where it really shines is with the shopkeeping element, and how the two halves of the game interact in an incredibly rewarding gameplay loop. This is definitely worth checking out.